Hi everyone, Talia from Zart Art. Today I'm going to show you five different ways to decorate a cabochon. So these are our pendants and cabochons. So you can see the glass goes over the top and you can create some really nice and interesting charms and necklaces. So to start off with, we'll be decorating some mineral paper with alcohol inks. So we're just going to use this as a nice vibrant background to put in the cabochon. Now we've covered alcohol inks in a previous video, so we won't go into too much detail, but I'll just show you how to apply them to get some nice effects. So we've got our alcohol inks in spray bottles. So this is just to get a nice light coat on the paper so we don't have to wait too long for drying time. Now with alcohol inks, it's always a good idea not to mix too many colors together. Otherwise you create a very dark background. So I'm just going to spread those across so they're not all mixing on top of each other. Now, if you can see that, there's some really interesting patterns happening here. So some nice blobs that are starting to merge into each other and some really interesting color mixing. So I'm just going to leave this to the side to dry and then we can use that in our cabochon later. Now our next one we'll be using some water soluble textures to make some patterns. So again using our mineral paper and we have these liquid crayons which will work quite nicely. So I'm just going to put some colour down onto the paper and then we'll add some water so all the colours mix together. So at this stage it doesn't really matter how you put the colour down because it'll all mix together once we spray it with a bit of water. So don't be too finicky about where you color in. Now we've got some colour down. This is just a spray bottle with water. And you can see that the texture on the mineral paper will lift off the page very, very easily. So I don't want these colours to mix around too much because they will merge together and create black. So I'm just going to use this brush to help spread them a little bit. And I like these marbling effects. So I'm going to try not to mix it all too much. So it just becomes a watery mess. So I'm going to leave that as is. Mineral paper will take a little bit longer to dry than a normal cartridge paper because all the water's sitting on the surface. So we'll put this aside to dry and hopefully it doesn't shift too much while we leave it. So our next one we'll be using some of these collage paper pieces. So these are quite nice. They're all different kinds of handmade paper. So there's embossed, there's ones that have glitter in them because everyone likes a bit of glitter. So what I'm going to do is create a collage using these papers on a separate piece of paper and then we'll use that in our capuchon design as well. So this is just a normal piece of cartridge paper. I'm going to use Mod Podge to glue it down just because it's the closest thing to me. So it makes my life a bit easier. Of course, a normal glue stick will work as well. Some of these are a little bit stuck together. So I'm just going to put the glue on the bottom of these pieces of paper and just stick them down on another piece to create a little mixed collage work. So of course when making these cabochons you can use either a small piece of paper but because we're using the whole piece what this will allow us to do is pick the best part of the picture that we can use in the cabochon and we can make several cabochons using the same techniques, patterns or materials from the one page. So if you were making these in bulk then definitely fill up your whole page with patterns and different materials.
Now that we've filled up most of our page, we'll put this aside for this to dry as well. So now we've got three pieces nearly ready to go in the cabochon. So our next two can be done directly into the cabochon itself. Now for our next cabochon, we'll be using magic clay. So if you haven't seen magic clay before, it is a paper air drying clay. So it's very easy to use and very lightweight. So all I'm going to do is take three separate pieces of the magic clay. So always nice to use some bright colors so we can see what we're doing. So I'm just using the yellow, the white, and what you can also do with the white magic clay is color it in yourself and make your different colors that way. But otherwise you can buy the pre-made colors as well. So I've got our three little blobs of magic clay. So you'd want to use two to three colors using this technique. And then we're just going to place that in the middle of the pendant. So just dab it down. Now what's great about this is you don't have to use too much magic clay and you always get a really different and unique result. Now I'm going to push the glass very lightly and then use my thumbs to rotate it. So what's that will cause is the colors to start to merge together and turn into that spiral shape. So as I'm twisting it, the magic clay is starting to move towards the outside layer. And the more I twist, the more it'll start to blend together. So you might lose one of the colors underneath the others, depending on what quantities you use. So as you can see, I've got those three mixing together and that will seal itself because the magic clay does have an adhesive in it. So no need to glue it down. And if you do have any excess magic clay starting to come out of the edge, you can just remove that with your finger. And then that's all you need to make those little pendants. The next one that we're going to make is going to be a little ladybird. So this one especially will be good for maybe the younger kids to try and turn the capuchon into something semi-realistic. So what we're going to do is use the magic clay again. So I'm just going to spread the magic clay over the pendant just to get a layer of that red. You could of course use paper for this as well, but the magic clay is nice, quick and easy to use. And now this is called modeling foam and this stuff's really cool. The black one kind of looks like caviar, but modeling foam is very similar to magic clay, but it's got little polystyrene balls in it, which gives it a really cool texture. So this is really fun to play with, but also a really good craft material. So now we just need a little tiny piece of the modeling foam. So this is good for the kids to do some really nice detailed work. It's just little tiny pieces of the modeling foam in the pendant, because when we squish the glass top on top, these little spots will become much bigger as they spread. So just little tiny pieces over that cabochon. So then we've barely used any of the foam or the magic clay at all. And now I will put the bead over the top. So I'm gonna be careful not to squish it too much so that all of the pieces don't blend together. So then push that in and just let the excess come over the top a little bit. Now we've got our little dots there. Of course, you could draw this if you wanted to as well, if you had a little bit more time but the magic clay is quite fun to work with. And now we've got our little joggle eyes. So we'll use the little tiny ones, the top of the packet. And just with our glue, so I'll we'll use some of the Mod Podge because it'll dry clear. Let's see if my stumpy thumbs will let me do this. So I'll put that just up there. Just apply a little bit of glue. There we go. Isn't he adorable? Okay. Now we've got our joggle eyes on and we've got our little ladybird character. Of course, any bug or any other kind of pattern in there will work quite nicely if you want to do little characters or something similar to that. So then that one is done. And now we'll go back to the papers that we've created previously. So they've all dried and they dry pretty quickly. So we'll use our alcohol ink first. Just make sure it's nice and dry. So this one's been sitting for about 10 minutes and the layer of ink was quite thin. So that's ready to go. Now we'll use one of our empty 
dependence. And what's great about this is you can choose which section of the alcohol ink you wanna use in the pendant. So just by using the glass bead, you can go over the image and you can get a few out of this, but just choose where you like the patterns the most. So I think there's some quite interesting color blending happening in there. So I'm going to do what all teachers hate and cut out a circle right in the middle of the page. Probably all cringing right now because I waste all of this paper, but just using a pencil, you can go around the stone and this is what we'll be cutting out. So you wanna cut just inside the line because otherwise that circle's not going to fit in the pendant. So if you cut right on the line, look at me going right in the center of that page. So cut around and then that should fit in the pendant nicely. So we can put our excess paper aside and we'll just clean up the edges. Now I've got our pendant, you can place the paper in there and you can see it's still a bit too large on the side. So you can trim it down a little bit more just so it fits a bit more cleanly. And if you put that into the pendant, you can put the glass bead on top just to see if that'll fit nicely. So that's what the pendant will look like. We'll just take the bead out so that we can seal it with some of the Mod Podge. So the reason why you would use Mod Podge as opposed to something like PVA is because this will dry clear. So what I usually do is put it on the glass first and then around the edges. And that's just habit because if you put the Mod Podge onto your design itself, if you're using something like water soluble textures, it's more likely to smudge. However, the alcohol inks won't smudge from the Mod Podge because they're already dry. So just push that in to seal it. So that should stay as is. So that's our little alcohol ink pendant. And now the next one we'll do is go back to the water soluble textures. And again, I've done something that all teachers hate and made my little water soluble texture work right in the middle of the page where I can cut out the whole piece and not use the rest. So sorry about that. But again, I'm just gonna find a spot which I think will look nice with all the colors blending together. So I might go right in the middle, of course. So again, if you wanted to, and what you'd probably do with a class or with kids is to fill out the whole page and then you can use the rest of the paper to make either more pendants or even to do a collage work with all your off cuts. So again, remember to cut right on the line because as you trace around the glass stone, it's gonna be bigger than the pendant itself. So I've trimmed that a little bit and that fits in quite nicely. So I'll just put that bead on to see how it fits. So that's quite a nice little blended piece of paper. And again, we'll put the Mod Podge on top of the stone and I'm going to go around the edges of the stone to make sure it seals it nicely just because if I put the Mod Podge on the water soluble, water soluble texture, it will start to run and move around. So just clean off any excess glue from the top. And there you have the next pendant done. Last one is our collage paperwork. So now we've got our whole page full of collage paper and let's see if I wanna take a chunk out of the middle. Now I've got our stone and we'll find a nice little piece that we like from there. I could just take that piece right from there, but that would be a bit of a waste. So I like how all the angles start to merge together. So I think I'll take my next piece straight out of there. But of course, something like this, you could get 20 different pendants out of it, all just from using a sheet of collage paper. But this is a really nice lesson for the kids if you're exploring composition because they can see which part of the page they like and could discuss why that interests them. But also a really nice Mother's Day gift as well because it's something that looks quite effective 
and maybe even something that the student's parents would actually wear. So just a few layers of paper on this. So I'm just gonna cut out that rough circle so I can get a bit more precise as these papers are quite thick. There we go, we've got our circle. Put the rest of that aside and see how it places in the pendant. It's quite good. Now we'll put our Mod Podge on the glass stone and don't forget to go around the edges. We'll place that on. Got a bit excited with the glue on that one, but that's okay because it will dry clear. So don't worry if the kids have put on too much glue and you can see it through. Once it's dry, it'll be nice and clear. So then there's our last pendant, which looks quite good. You can put it with the rest. Now we've got our five different cabochons using some different materials and techniques. We've got our magic clay swirl. We've also got the little magic clay bug character. We've got the alcohol ink blending, as well as the water soluble texture on the mineral paper. And here we've got our little paper collage piece. So all of them look quite different and it's quite an easy result to achieve something that actually looks a little bit decent for either a Mother's Day present or if you're doing a nice quick jewellery making activity as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week.